All right, you guys, Crawl for a Cure 2019 is already approaching. This year, the date is October 5th, so it's time for me to start working on the crawler, start putting some upgrades on it, and getting it ready to kick ass at Crawl for a Cure 2019. The first upgrades we're going to start looking at today are some knuckles and C-hubs here. Now, I already have knuckles and C-hubs um, that are aluminum. However, my goal is to make a blue-themed truck. I'm not going to tell you guys what my plan is for the body yet, but if you follow me on Instagram, you might start to have an idea here soon. But this is their, what is this, stage one kit, along with some walkouts. And then these are just the knuckle bushings. And then I've also got... Incision lockers. I've got, I've got these for front and rear, but today we're just looking at the front axle. Um, I've used locked up RC lockers before, but so I wanted to try something different with the incision lockers. And finally, I have a titanium SSD RC steering link here. Comes with both of them, but I don't know. I just figured I'd give them a shot and uh, kind of try and get the links in the front a little bit uh, more low profile and just smaller in general so I'm not going to show you the full teardown process just because I've done it a million times before on camera and it would just take too long basically so I'm going to pull the front axle out and basically get it to the point where I'm ready to install our incision locker here so give me a few minutes and I'll be back with you alright guys so we are ready to start rebuilding the axle here it's now a week later I've gotten more parts because upon further inspection my gears in here are extremely warm because these are the stock gears um, so they are aluminum they're extremely warm um, and then also my uh, axle my front axle shafts here are relatively loose the pins and the shafts and everything are just really worn so I went and got new axle shafts new gears and new bearings this week so that's why this video took a little bit longer to come out. So I've got some underdrive gears here that we're going to be putting in. The Axial uh, Scorpion Universal set here. It's the same as what I have because I've been running these shafts for the better part of maybe two or three years. So I figured, you know what, nowhere that I could find had um, the Vanquish shafts in stock. So I just decided to get the Axial ones again because they've served me well. I've been running them for a really long time. And I got some Avid bearings because the ones in my Slash I absolutely loved and some of the ones in this axle here are seized and very dirty. So it doesn't make sense really for me to take them apart, clean them, and all that jazz. So on top of that, as you guys already know, incision locker, um, steering components, steering links, knuckle bushings. I also got a brand new axle housing, however I'm not going to be using that. I'm just going to save that because at some point this old one that I have here is probably going to break so I'd rather have a brand new one to put on instead of a half broken one if that makes any sense. So let's go ahead and get into building this front axle. Alright so the first thing I'm going to do here is install my incision spool locker onto the axial um, ring gear dip a little thread lock on the end of the screw and thread it in there just so that it doesn't come out. And then I will do that for all four screws. Alright, here we go. Now I've got my incision spool locker attached to the ring gear. Um, I'm not going to bug with these screws that stick out extra, I'm just going to leave them. They should be fine and they shouldn't interfere with anything, so I'm not going to touch those, but ideally I think that you would want to use shorter screws there. So next I'm going to grab my bearings here, stick them on the uh, gear and onto the other side of the spool locker, like so. Now I'm going to grab my axle housing, which I did decide just to use the new one because the old one is full of crap, old grease, all that stuff. I don't really want that. 
um, in my axle, or at least in my new one when I build it up. So I just decided to go with a fresh housing. I'm going to put my pinion bearings in. One in the front there. Get that pressed in. There we go. And then grab my pinion and push the next bearing onto it, like so. And slide that into there. Make sure that it gets seated in there well, which it is not. Oh yeah, it is. Alright. Sweet. Now I will grab my spool gear and locker and just drop that right into place. Now it looks like the pinion is going to need a little bit of coaxing to, to get in there nice and straight and flush. So let me do it off camera and then we will start, uh, or then we'll work on putting the axle shaft. Okay, I'm only going to show you guys one axle shaft because the other one is exactly identical. So when we're putting these together, the first thing we do is we take this little round thing, the little, I don't know, it's, it's a cylinder with a hole in it and you put it into the um, end of the shaft there and then you gotta get it so that the hole is in line with the slot and then take and put your, <laughs> this is proving to be harder than it should be, put your cup over top of it and then grab the pin drop it into there and through the hole in the original little piece and take your retainer collar and put it over to keep the pin in place. Now there is no way that the collar gets secured in place but a way that you can do is you can take a little dab of grease and put it in there so it doesn't fall off just while you're working on it. The other thing you can do is just go ahead and put your bearing on the end there. So let me do the other one and we will install them. Alright, so I'm not happy with the fitment of these shafts in the incision spool locker. Now, okay, I probably should have gone with Locked Up RC, and at this point, I'm going to recommend you to buy Locked Up RC spool lockers. They do require slight filing of the axle shaft, however, they are much, much tighter than these uh, incision lockers are. But to remedy this, um, I've come up with a solution, so let's first put our bearing on here. Uh, I may have to actually take this out to put the um, knuckle, or the C-hub on, sorry. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I've also just put a little piece of electrical tape to hold on the um, pin collar for the axle shaft as well. So what I'm going to do, this might seem a little weird, but I've discovered that if you take a piece of the plastic that the parts came in, like the, like the plastic bag, and you take and put it over where you're going to insert the axle shaft and then push the axle shaft into its place with that plastic in the way it actually provides a good um... it's actually a very good bushing and gives you a very nice and tight fit to your axle shaft in these incision lockers um, kind of a weird one I know, but it does work, and it makes them very tight, as I'm struggling to put them in right now, so. It makes them tight, maybe two layers was too much here, so I tried doing two thicknesses, now I'm just going to try one, um, which worked earlier, so let's try that real quick. bearing on there. There we go. Much better. Now it's nice and tight. And granted this will wear out over time. However, I'm not too worried about that. I'm really only worried about it for the five or six hours. No, probably ten hours that I'm going to be at Crawl Freak here. And I would assume that this will last up that long. So not super worried about it. Go ahead and do this other side. It is kind of tricky to get the plastic on the end of the shaft, but just like that. Get in there. Is it going to go in? It should. Looks like it's catching on something. 
All right, let me finish putting this on off camera real quick. Okay, so all I've done up to this point is basically just grease the inside, put the front of the housing on, and put the C-hubs on. So that's all I've done. I've literally done nothing else here. So let's go ahead and uh, attach the C-hubs with um, the stock screws because they're not, they don't supply C-hub screws. Like they supply the screws for the knuckles and stuff, but not for the C-hubs. Whatever. So let me do this real quick and we will move on to probably putting on the pan hard mount. Alright, so that's done. Now I'm going to take and just kind of... So this pan hard mount, this is an RC four wheel drive pan hard that came with the chassis mounted steering kit, I believe, um, for the SCX-10. Let's see, how did this go on? I think it went on like this. Yeah. And this one, this little screw, I think went there. I'm gonna grab the button head, not button head, those are not button head, and that was the wrong size screwdriver. <laughs> the cap head screw there, and just put it into my mount up there. Get the housing all tightened down. I'm loving the color of these C's, by the way, especially on the camera. On the camera, they look beautiful. Oh my god, here, let me get a nice hot close-up for you guys. Oh yeah, look at that color. Beautiful. Alright, so with that, I'm gonna... Oh yeah, I forgot about the bottom screws. Gotta put those in with the little nuts on the back. Alright, there you have it. Axle is almost complete. We still have the knuckles to put on and the steering links. So let's go ahead and dig into that. Open up the package a little bit more. Grab out the steering knuckles, excuse me. There's one. And let's open the other one. Oh, it already is open. Now I'm also going to need to grab with these my steering bushings or the knuckle bushings. Um, I don't understand why they don't include these, because if you didn't know that you needed them, I'm not sure why, or like, I'm not sure how they would expect you to have a positive experience with their product, if you know what I mean. A little bit weird, just to say. Where's my Loctite gone? Here it is. Alright, let's get going assembling the knuckles and the whole, like, steering end assembly here. Now this is definitely... A finicky part of the project here. So, what we need to do is we need to take and insert the bearing into the knuckle first. Make sure it gets seated squarely, uh, if I can. Mm. Yeah. All right. I guess that's seated in there well. Let's just give it a press with my screwdriver. Yep, alright. That bearing is seated. Now I'm going to take my my knuckle bushings and put them in to the steering knuckle. I'm going to keep the whole thing sideways so that they don't fall out. Because that's the most tricky part of this, is making sure they don't fall out. And then the part with the steering horn on it is going to go on the shorter side of the C-hub. So I gotta take my tape off here. This is gonna be quite a juggling act here because I don't want anything to be falling apart anywhere. Let's see if I can do this. Keeping it sideways to ensure that my bushings don't fall out. Oh, 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 wait. Oh, I did it, I did it, nice. <laughs> there we go. Get some Loctite on the end of these screws and get those threading in. Very nice. Okay. All right. Well, let me finish this off camera, guys, and I will get back to you. And here is the finished axle, you guys. So I put it all together off camera, just or like I did the last couple things off camera, just because they're pretty simple. All I did basically for the ends here was I put the bearing in, 
put the hex on, just temporarily put the wheel nut on. And then for the steering links, I just assembled them. This is the SSD RC titanium link. I did have to um, grab myself some longer rod ends off the shelf because the normal, uh, the, blah, 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 <laughs> the stock uh, knuckles curve inward so that, you, or so basically the link doesn't have to be as long, but I like because of these knuckles, or yeah, knuckles, <laughs> whew, the link needs to be longer, so I grabbed some longer rod ends and put them on. Now, this is just the RC4 wheel drive steering link that I already had, just bolted it on. Now, I also need to get some wider hexes by probably maybe an eighth of an inch, if not a little bit more. This is because the Hyrax tires are fat. Like, they are pretty fat around the edge here, and you can see right there where the old knuckles have been rubbing. In fact, you can see right there the corner has gotten super rubbed off because of the tire. So I need to find some wider uh, hexes, which shouldn't be hard, and I don't think that I'll need to do any modifications really. Uh, I should have enough axle stub to put my uh, wheel nut on. So. I don't know. I'm just going to find those off camera. I'm not going to show you guys really. I'm just going to do that on my own, figure out what works. So thank you again. Or yeah, just thanks again so much for watching you guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed this first build up part or the first part of the build up series for Crawl for a Cure 2019. I also hope that you guys like that weird little um, part bag trick that I did to get the axle shafts nice and tight. Now the only slop is the slight slop in the uh, universals there. So that's it for me, guys. I hope to see you at Crawl for a Cure 2019. It's coming up fast. Next time, we're probably going to work on the rear axle. And uh, yeah, hope to see you there. And uh, have a great day, guys.